Have you ever wondered how many sensors, entities, binary sensors, device trackers, cameras your system has? Well, there is a way to show that in a home assistant. And while we're on that topic, we will also be talking about counting specific entities in home assistant. We'll start in a couple of seconds. But first, let me start by thanking all those wonderful people who are supporting me on the YouTube and have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to everybody who watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. And now let's get started with today's video. In a video called My Own Setup, version 3, I've shown a couple of things that I have in my home assistant, and there were some questions on how did I do that. Today we will be covering three things. First is this system statistics, where I can see the list of all the entities uh, sorted by type that I have in my home assistant, ranging from alerts, automations, device trackers, input selects, plans, sensors, utility meters, and weather information. But while we are already doing that, and it will be a very simple task, we'll also cover two more things. We will also be covering Auto Entities card, because it allows you to track certain type of the devices or entities that match your search criteria. And while we are already doing that, we'll have a look on how you can make this. This is a counter that counts devices based on certain area where they are located, and then shows you how many in this case, light and switches are turned on. But let's start first with the system statistics. How can you create a list like this? Well, that can be a little bit of pain, because for each of those sensors, you have to create one manually. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. As you can see here, I have a lot of YAML files. Count alert, etc. all the way up to count weather. And these are the statistics counter. You do not have to create all of them, you can only create ones that you are interested in. For example, YAML counter. YAML counter is a simple counter that utilizes platform command line. And it issues following command. It searches in the configuration file for all the files with the YAML extension. So if you have disabled, like me, it will skip them. And then in each of every of those YAML files, it counts the number of lines. So with these count lines, we receive this information, number lines of code.yaml. Don't worry, link to all the YAML code will be in the description of the video. I will not be linking all the sensors, but I will be linking some of them. And there you can search for the rest. Okay, now let's look at number of entities. For the entities counter, we are using platform template. Sensor, which will be count entities, friendly name is number of entities, and the value template is the length of the states. And this should give you number of entities. For some other sensors, things are even more simple. Once again, we use platform template, then we have sensors and count camera, which is the name of the sensor, we give it a friendly name and the value template. And then we are using states.camera because we are looking for camera states only, we list and count them. And that way we create a sensor that has count of all the cameras. For the alerts, we're using state alerts. For the automations, we are using automation, binary sensor, camera, climate, counter, devices or device trackers, entities, we list everything, groups, image processing, boolean. One thing, if you are planning to use this counter, to count REST commands, it will not work. Unfortunately, you cannot count REST commands like that. This one is still giving me zero and I have to work on it to get it fixed and working in my home assistant setup. So now you know how to pull all the statistics or all the information about the various types of entities you have in your home assistant. But let's look on how you can group them and display them inside home assistant. As I do, for example, for both lights and switches, for the first and second floor. This code has been taken from the community forum. And when I create my automations, I always go 
to community forum and check if somebody has done something similar, then either reuse that code and rework on it, or get just inspired and do my own version of that code. For this, and this is the counter of the devices, based also on the state, I use this one here from Petra. The link, of course, to this code also will be in the description of the video. So what we do here? Platform once again is template, sensors, and then we define lights first floor. So I have this for both of my floors, first floor and second floor. The difference between the first floor and the second floor, of course, is not just in the name, friendly name and the unique ID of this, but is in the areas I'm searching. So on the first floor, I have kitchen, dining room, living room, corridor and hall. On the second floor, I have loft, bedroom, bathroom, zeta room and looker room. And I'm using the areas devices are located to match both lights and switches for both of those areas. If you, for example, have a lot of door window sensors, you can also use this to see what area has open doors or windows. Let's go back to first floor. We have defined friendly name, unique ID, which is great because then this is the persistent sensor inside Home Assistant. And then we define following search criteria. First one is search state. I'm only interested in the devices that are on. So any light that is off will not be counted. Second, I define the area. This is the areas that I have defined in my home assistant and I know that those areas here are on my first floor, kitchen, dining room, etc. Then we are also searching for the lights. As I mentioned, you can search for the lights, switches, it all depends where you want to search for these devices. It can also be, for example, binary sensors, and you may be searching for them if they are in a state open. And the rest of the code is more or less similar for both switches and lights. We are searching for light in a state light, where the search state is on, in the areas, and this is the search areas. And at the end, we receive a list of all the lights, which we now here are parsing against the list and length, which could give us a count number. You could probably do the same thing by replacing this here with count. If you do not want to see the count of lights, instead, if you want to see the list of all the lights, you would just need to delete this here. And the sensor now will not contain number of lights that are turned on. Instead, it will be the list of all the lights that are turned on. Of course, repeat this as many times as you want, just defining each time different area. The link to this code and the original post on the community forums will be in the description of the video. But let's look at the third thing I mentioned, and this is the list of currently active lights inside our Lovelace UI. This here is the automatic list of all the lights that are currently turned on. If I would, for example, turn this switch off, it will remove this light here, but also right and left light from the list. Let's try. If somebody would turn them on, they would automatically pop up on the list. So how do we do that? Let's press on three dots, edit dashboard, and look here. This is the card, but what card is this? This is custom auto entities card. Let's jump to HACS. The link to this card and repository of that card will be in the description of the video. So this is the auto entities cards and as title says, it is used to create automatic lists based on the search conditions. This card allows you to either include or exclude based on the filter. And of course it allows also sorting. The good thing is that you can use the Lovelace UI to control it as I've shown previously. So let's jump back into that card. As stated in the repository, you can use include domain and I'm using domain light with the state on to include devices. For the exclude, you can also specify what you don't want to include in this list. If I would want to, I could add this, for example, also switches. So I will have two domains, light and switches. Domain, light, state is on. We can add additional filters and we can also create filter groups and non-filter entities. In terms of sorting, you can do reverse sorting, numeric sorting, but we do not have anything numeric here. And we can use a couple of methods, domain, entity ID, 
friendly name. Last changed, updated, last triggered, and state. This is a very simple card, but is great because it is flexible and it auto populates with all the entities that match one of those criteria. As I mentioned, you can replace it with the switch. And then it would list all the switches that are matching the state that you specified here. And of course, it doesn't have to be domain, it can be entity ID, state name, group devices, areas, etc. These are the three things that I think correlate nicely one to another. First one shows you statistics about Home Assistant. I know there are not a lot of things that you can do with your system statistics, but it's also very nice to see how your system is growing. And my GitHub gets updated at least once a month with the new data from my system, my system statistics. The second thing is the list of active license switches. It doesn't give you a list of active devices switches, but it will help you, for example, if you are leaving your house to see if there are any lights or switches that are turned on or off. Just don't forget that some of the switches you probably have always turned on. And yeah, if you would turn them off, for example, your fridge or something else could also turn off. For example, for me, this switch here always has to be in the on state. So I know that if here we have number one, it's okay, if it's more than one, then I have something working which I probably shouldn't. And the last thing is this great dynamic auto entities card, which allows you to not just see but interact with the devices, be it light switches or probably something else. Links will be of course down in the description of the video. I really do hope that you did find this video useful and that you did enjoy it. And if you did enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up, because it not just means a lot to me, but it also helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you are feeling lucky and want to live on the edge, you can try and post your question or idea in the comment section of the video. And hope that YouTube will not delete it. But if you want to make sure that I respond to your comment and that YouTube doesn't delete anything, go to the Discord server. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video updates. Until the next time, bye bye and have fun.